Okay guys, so for today's lesson we're going to be looking at the nature and role of shared values and understandings and how they are expressed through rituals and customs. So belief systems and ideologies are a product of the environment and the times in which they have stemmed from. So this means like uh, Christianity or Islam uh, are products of that kind of time frame. So the early uh, BC, so late BCs, early ADs and the Middle East. So what um, has kind of shaped these belief systems are the environments and the times they've come from. And it is these environments and times that uh, shared values that underpin beliefs and ideologies arise from and kind of create those shared understandings. Um, values are like glue and they hold us together and the stronger you know that glue is or the stronger the values are the more likely persons are going to be held together by them and so it's through these shared values and understandings that provide meaning purpose and identity for all adherents that follow the belief systems or ideologies um, so I'm going to give you an example. Like I said in class, we're going to go uh, look at feminism uh, quite a lot to try and understand at least ideologies and how this is applied. Um, so as we know, feminism started in you know the 1970s. The environment at the time was quite an industrial Western societies, um, and as we know, it post uh, so modernization or industrializing uh, industrialization creates a heightened awareness of rights and greater education. Um, add this with time and during the time feminism kind of came into prominence uh, there was past two world wars that just happened and they were currently in the Vietnam War uh, so this kind of led to a requirement to diversify the workforce which kind of led to a wanting or a desire to remove the reliance on male workers this has kind of culminated if you kind of add the environment of an industrial society with the time of a post World War in Vietnam War era, the focus of feminism has kind of developed at that time to be on working and reproductive rights for women. Um, so current, sorry, from this time and environment, feminism has developed several shared values and understandings. So uh, a value of equality, women's rights and understanding that women should have choice in their work and in their lifestyles. So most feminists subscribe to these shared values and understandings, as as we discussed earlier. Not all do, but so most do. And because that most because most women subscribe to these shared values and understandings, it's quite a prominent basis of feminism. Therefore, these values and understandings shape the rituals and customs of feminism because everybody believes and values these kinds of ideals. Um, their practices are, are kind of shaped by this, and therefore, rituals and customs. Um, so, therefore, their rituals and customs kind of are based on that which then leads to creating meaning purpose and identity for feminists who subscribe to these values and who kind of have these rituals and customs that are shaped through this um, so current feminism so women that's just one example I'm going to look at like more current feminism now to try and understand this a little bit as well so women have been working, this is the time in which we're at and the environment in which we're at. They've been working for 40 years. However, statistically, they still earn less and continue to do more housework. Therefore, feminism is now focused on challenging the perceptions and attitudes towards women at home and work rather than trying to push to get women in work. Um, the shared values have also shifted, also shared values have remained the same, but understandings have shifted to some extent. It's focused more on the patriarch and its role in limiting women's involvement um, rather than the government's uh, inability, sorry, ineffectiveness to get women in work. So focusing more on cultural attitudes and values towards women in the workplace rather than the institutions and the regulations that are stopping women from getting into the workplace. Um, so therefore, because these understandings have shifted, and also whilst the value, but sorry, whilst the uh, values have stayed the same, the kind of understandings of feminism have shifted, and therefore the rituals and customs have shifted with that. So there's more of a move away from physical protest because they're no longer focusing on these institutional um, uh, systems that are stopping women from working, but now the cultural attitudes that are restricting their role in work um, 
they no longer can protest that. You can't really protest cultural attitudes and values. So it's shifted to more of an intellectual movement and intellectual discussions. Therefore, because of this, identity has shifted. Uh, feminists now are kind of seen more as man-hating because of that kind of focus on well, the patriarch and, and men's role in kind of stopping women from, from getting involved. Uh, but also it seemed to be more independent. Previous uh, feminists were seen kind of in the role of the home. So whilst they were protesting to try and get work, uh, sorry, try to get the right to work, it was kind of looking at, well, you know, what about their role at home? What's this going to, how's this going to affect their um, roles as mothers and as carers? And what's the men doing? Why aren't men kind of stopping their women from fighting up for work and those kinds of things? Whereas we're beyond that now. Women, you know, have jobs. It's accepted that they'll have jobs. The types of jobs that they'll have um, or even the role that they'll have within their jobs is still kind of contested. And so feminists are now kind of seen outside of the home so independence is definitely an identity we kind of align with feminism but because of that view on patriarchy there's still that ideal or that identity of man hating with this the with the kind of the role women now have in society the fact that they do have jobs and especially in jobs where it gives them power and a voice like journalism and like politicians because of that platform um, they're able to create a meaning of empowerment no longer are they requesting the government to give them the power they're now saying we demand power we deserve power and and you guys so men or or culture are kind of stopping us from having that but we deserve this so the meaning of empowerment is definitely a big part of feminism now um, if you look at the language and way feminism was discussed in the 1970s it was very much about victimizing women to some extent whereas yet yeah, it's much more an empowerment now um, and then the meaning, uh, sorry, yeah, the meaning of um, the shared values of equality and understanding of women's role in society um, and patriarch's restriction on the purpose of feminism is to create choice. So that shared values and understanding has led to, oh, choice has always kind of been um, a uh, purpose or sorry, a, um, yeah, sorry, has always been a purpose of feminism, but it's just kind of, even more so now with that shared values and understandings of women's role in society and the male's patriarch of stopping women from achieving that. Um, so where we kind of get an understanding, as discussed in class already, where we kind of get an understanding of uh, what belief systems kind of believe and value and what ideologies uh, what their ideas are and what they value really stems from ritual. It is kind of the best feature that we have to um, get an insight into the workings of a belief system or an ideology as it's the natural expression of a belief or an idea. Uh, one way we can try to understand rituals is through the celebrations or a behaviour for a certain purpose. Um, so behind any ritual lies a story of some sort. So, for example, the fact that we celebrate Christmas on December 25th annually and it's done so to recognise the birth of Jesus Christ and the mythology of Santa Claus. So all the kind of stories that are existence around Jesus and his birth you know, the um, wise men and, and seeing the star and the birth through a virgin mother and all those kinds of things um, and the relationship that has with uh, Christmas. And the understanding of that story is what helps us to be able to get involved in those rituals, so what helps us to participate. Um, you know, those that don't really know the story around um, Jesus Christ and his birth or the stories of Santa Claus will really struggle to understand the rituals that, that exist around um, Christmas. Um, so behind the stories pe uh, people tell lie their real beliefs and ideologies which capture their real philosophy of life and that's why rituals are so good um, and so useful for understanding uh, belief systems and ideologies in terms of what people believe and what they value and, and the ideas that are around that because it's these stories that really capture our real philosophy, our world view. So ideological rituals, however, are a little, uh, sometimes difficult to identify and understand as they are not uniform compared to rituals from belief systems. And this is 
really stems back to that lack of uniformity around um, the stories, myths and legends of ideologies, which come from that lack of hierarchy, that lack of structure and organisation um, that exists within ideologies because of that lack of text, no real central meeting place. And because there's no real central meeting place, there's no one really telling them what the stories are, what the myths are around their ideas, around their ideologies, and therefore their rituals are not so well ingrained. There's no authority in, in kind of how they practice their beliefs and values. So an example of this again, we're going to look at feminism. Feminists lack commonality in the ways in which they express their views. So this can kind of be seen through the way that some women and men may choose to express their desires for equality in the workplace and home by protesting against unequal pay and lack of government um, action on that, maybe potentially creating signs and marching on the street. So this is a very much macro level example. Um, whereas others may choose to regularly read feminist literature and discuss these ideas amongst their friends and family, so the micro world, um, and completely different, some may choose to blog or vlog or write opinion pieces in newspaper columns on women's social and cultural status, so again macro, oh sorry, um, uh, on the macro level, or others may choose to discuss pay and promotion opportunities for women uh, with their bosses, so on the mezzo. So some women might do one, some women might do all. It really just kind of depends on, on what women or men um, who as align with feminist um, ideals, um, kind of how they choose to express that. Um, but it's through those expressions, again, that we can really understand what their beliefs and values are. And so really that's the role of uh, expressing values, or sorry, the ritual expressions and customs because it really just demonstrates what the beliefs are, what the values are of any belief system or ideology. And they also help to really shape that identity and create meaning and purpose.